my God. Oh, Jesus. October was, was, a, was a rough time, man. Holy cow. That was so many videos. Did you know I, I put out a video every single day from the 15th of uh, September through October 31st. Now, obviously, uh, you know, Warner Brothers kind of struck down uh, my, uh, my, my Halloween video. Hopefully that'll be back up soon. But until then, we're going to talk about, oh, geez. A little bit of a little bit of vinegar syndrome today. A little bit of a little bit of VS. Uh, yes, sir. My bread and butter vinegar syndrome. We're back uh, with more from their uh, their 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 vast archives of film preservation, restoration, all sorts of jazz. And uh, yeah, let's uh, let's just let's 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 dig in. Um, by the way, two things before we get into the actual review. Uh, I. Um, I am going to be doing Texas Chainsaw this month, but I am going to try uh, and just, I just, I know I saw this uh, today, uh, just before starting this recording, uh, Just the Discs podcast, great podcast, by the way, uh, they're doing an entire Vinegar Syndrome month, uh, which is great because I'm only going to be able to have time for so many uh, Vinegar Syndrome reviews. I'm going to try to put in as many as possible. I do have some Severance stuff I need to catch up on and uh, some other releases that uh, I, I should probably review. Um, so we'll see uh, how many Vinegar Syndrome releases I actually get to this month. Either which way, uh, if you want some really, really great recommendations uh, going into Black Friday and that big ass sale that we're all just like, our wallets are shaking in their little booties about, uh, go and listen to Just the Discs because it is a great podcast. Anyway, second order of business. Uh, I just want to thank my patrons real quick. I have so many fucking patrons, uh, and you're all beautiful, but I do need to personally, on camera, thank a few who played, who pledged, who pledged uh, $10 or more uh, to the Patreon. Really, you guys just, like, make my heart swell. Uh, I don't remember this first one if I thanked him or not. So I'm just going to do it, potentially again. I'm sorry to all the people who I potentially have not thanked twice as well. I'm awful and have the memory of a goldfish. But Matt Allegretti, Matt Allegretti, uh, I, I, I remember saying your name before, but just in case, Matt Allegretti, uh, thank you so much, man. That's uh, $10, $10? You've now paid me $20 because uh, you joined back in September. Uh, thank you so much. I really appreciate it, Matt. Uh, and your your very Italian last name, Matt Allegretti, uh, which I don't even know if you're Italian or not, but uh, Matt Allegretti. Um, let's see, Diggum, Diggum with his rock and roll stiff. Diggum actually, uh, super cool dude, is in two bands, I think? Uh, I'm bad at knowing all my, my patrons' personal shit, but uh, I will link to a video that he did with his friends or dig them if you're listening to this, dig them you did with, with your with your bandmates uh, for a song, a slasher-themed music video that was very energetic and fun. I'll link that down below. Um, so check that out, everybody. And uh, let's see, Stuart Anderson, thank you as well for them monies. Uh, just picture me, I don't know, licking your toes. D don't go away, don't go away, don't go away. I, maybe you're into that, I don't know, I don't know. I don't know you personally, I don't know. So, you know, I'm just, I'm just throwing out shit here, man. Steven Spencer, uh, who is apparently, uh, based on your email address, which I'm not going to give out, but uh, apparently you quite love Lucio Fulci, uh, uh, and uh, that, that makes me very pleased. So welcome aboard, uh, Stephen. Thank you for not only your support, but also just being a fan of one of the greatest directors of all time. That's awesome. You know, we're, we are a club of great people. We do great things, and a lot of our great things have to do with pushing really gory movies on our relatives. Uh, and then finally... I don't know how to say your name exactly, but I'm going to assume that I'm doing it right. Gern Blanston. Gern Blanston. Thank you so much, Gern, uh, for your $13 a month pledge. That's, uh, I, I feel like that's just all in the Halloween spirit, and that, that pleases me. Or you just really like my Friday the 13th videos. I don't know. But thank you so much. I appreciate it, man. Um, now, everybody who's donating $3 or more, thank you as well. I so much appreciate it, uh, really. Love it so much. Uh, now, I, I'm, waste, I'm spending so much time on this. Everybody who doesn't give a shit about Patreon is, is probably pissed off. So, uh, yeah, let's talk about Spellcaster. So, Spellcaster, uh, directed by Raphael uh, Zelensky? Is that how you say his name? I'm really bad at stuff. It's really early. My son woke up at 4.30. Uh, 
and I don't remember names like a little baby boy. Is he, okay, that was right. Uh, Raphael, 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 Raffle, Raffle, Raphael Zielinski uh, directed this uh, interesting little film from Charles Band and his his guys over at Empire Pictures back in 19. Uh, this was actually made in 1986, but released in 1988, starring Adam Ant. <laughs> And, um, yeah, uh, if you look at it real quick, it's a VSA release, of course, Vinegar Syndrome Archive. So you get this uh, nice hard slipcase, you take out, you, you, it just kind of, it kind of poops out the Blu-ray, and uh, you can see that it's just the same thing as the slipcase. You also get a poster, which is always fun, and uh, then just the Blu-ray, and that's, that's the whole, that's the whole shebang. And as, as, as previously noted, these things are a bit of a pain to get in. Um, you can put, you can load them from the bottom of the Blu-ray case, but I don't really like doing that because I'm a little OCD. Boop. But, uh, you know, it just takes a little bit of effort. Uh, but Spellcaster. So Spellcaster is, uh, has an interesting history for me. I watched Spellcaster, oh, I don't know, when I was like 14 or 15 years old. It was on Showtime or Cinemax, one of those. And it was just, it played a lot for some reason uh, during that period. Uh, on TV, and I think it was actually what got me into Adam Ant, which is so weird because he's barely in this movie. Adam Ant is in the movie for maybe I don't know. Let's let's be let's be nice about it and say mm, ten minutes. I don't think he's even in it for ten minutes, but let's say ten minutes. Uh, he obviously was only there for like a day of shooting, and yeah, you know, if you go in knowing that, if you go in knowing that this film that is very much based on showing off Adam Ant's visage in its advertising uh, does not actually contain very much Adam Ant, if you go in knowing that, it helps a lot. So, you know, I, I went in with that nostalgia factor and also already knowing that he's only in it for that little, little increment of time. And so I, uh, you know, just to give you my, my quick and easy answer to the quality of this movie, I had a perfectly fine time with it. I would say that Spellcaster, if I was to rank it amidst my VSA titles, uh, I would put it just probably at number three, right below Savage Dawn and L.A. Wars. It's definitely a better made film than L.A. Wars, but I think that uh, as far as entertainment value goes, it kind of belongs at number three there. Uh, which, you know, if you know my history with VSA titles, I'm not a huge fan of most of them. Uh, but, you know, Spellcaster, definitely really good. We'll see what happens when Necromancer comes uh, to my doorstep at some point. Uh, I don't know when I'm getting my package. I, just, I really want it. But uh, Spellcaster is good. It's a perfectly good movie. Is it great, though? I... Not really. <laughs> Basically, it's just a bunch of douchebags wandering around Charles Band's castle, trying to find a million dollars, and dying in mildly horrific ways. The plot itself is very iffy. The idea of a bunch of characters wandering around a big castle trying to win a million dollars while getting killed off in these, again, fun, sort of bizarre ways is great, but the execution is kind of middling. I think the big issue here is it's not very imaginative. The, the effects themselves are great, uh, a lot of the kills are really fun, but the basic premise is just, hey, we have all these characters and they're looking, they're, they're just looking for a check, so they're gonna like pull up, pull some books off some shelves and look in some uh, stuff for checks. Uh. And, you know, you have like certain characters try to cheat their way through it and stuff like that, but I feel like this would have been much better if there was like some sort of like skill necessary. They try it a little bit with this one character who uh, is, I guess, a big game hunter. And that doesn't, I don't know what, how that helps you find a check exactly. So, th you know, there's, there's certain issues as far as like how the film is written. I think that, you know, it, 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 very much feels like an attempt to utilize this location and work in some creative kills without really putting too much thought into, you know, the intrigue that the audience is meant to feel. Because there's no real mystery here. We we know that, you know, they're all gonna, they're all entering this castle under f kind of false pretenses. We know that a lot of them are gonna die. We know that it's almost definitely Satan behind things. It's all spelled out very clearly, and so because they don't have to really do much to find this this million dollar check, they really just have to look around. 
it kind of, I don't know, it kind of deflates things a bit for me. That said, what an 80s film. This is very 80s. Uh, not only is it distinctly within the Empire Pictures mold, but it features central performances from noted music personality Richard Blade, uh, who was a DJ and VJ back in the 80s. He was on uh, K-Rock in LA. Uh, and then they don't, we also get that chick from the AHA uh, Take On Me music video, B Bunty Bailey. And, uh, you know, she's actually really good. She plays this uh, alcoholic uh, rock star who is kind of a piece of shit, but I think has probably the best character arc in the film. Uh, we also get an assortment of other stereotypes that very much belong in an 80s horror movie. You get the fat guy who just wants to eat food all the time. You get the uh, the foreign criminal guy who, you know, is like taking out a switchblade any chance he gets. Don't play with me. No more play games! I'm dirty copy and I take what I want! Okay. And then you have your main characters, played by Gail O'Grady and Harold Pruitt, uh, Jackie and Tom, who are fine. Gail O'Grady uh, and, and Harold Pruitt, to an extent, are very charming personalities, but they are, they're lost in the shuffle a little bit. I don't think that they're given a whole lot of time to shine until, you know, a lot of the other characters have been killed off. But uh, a lot of the energy comes from Richard Blade and Bunty Bailey, if we're being honest here. And, uh, and Richard Blade, surprisingly good actor uh, for just, like, this... I mean, he's also playing what he was in real life, but still, surprisingly good actor. He's, he's really fun. Uh, him and Bunty Bailey really are the, the real stars here. How did Rock TV ever find this place? We got a good deal. Now, one criticism I did see for this movie is that there's not a lot of nudity. In fact, there's, as far as I remember, no nudity whatsoever. And while I don't need nudity in a film, it is strange how often nudity and sex scenes are teased without any follow through. It's very odd. There's a lot of scenes that set up just fucking uh, or nudity in some capacity. A lot of teasing and zero follow through. And I, I don't really understand why that is. Um, I mean, I can guess. I'm, I'm assuming they just couldn't get actors who, for the money they were being paid, would do nudity. Uh, that's what my assumption is. But either which way, it is an odd thing to tease so much nudity and not show it. And you know, the, the same can kind of be said of the gore. Blood and death are both certainly present, but while the creature effects are given quite a bit of professional treatment, the violence they perpetrate leaves something to be desired. Yeah, there's blood, but it's not really ever aggressive uh, in, its, in its flow. There's really only a couple really bloody deaths, uh, and then a lot of other ones are kind of, meh. They're still creative, and they still utilize, for the most part, some pretty fun creature effects but they certainly could have gone a little further. That being said, this is the 80s. You know, I'm sure Charles Band and company didn't want to deal with the MPAA at all. Just wanted to make a film that would get released, which the, the release of this film was not amazing, but uh, you know, I, I can understand in making the film, not wanting to go too far and just wanting to make something that is palatable uh, for audiences looking to rent a video or watch on HBO or whatever. That said, uh, John Beekler, uh, who directed Friday the 13th Part 7, uh, he does the second unit photography here for all the creature stuff, and he's great. He's so, like, his work is so great. Him, uh, the folks at MMI, Michael Deke, William Butler, all these effects guys really put in some great work here. Like, if there's one standout thing about this film, it's the effects work is absolutely top-notch for this uh, era and budget. It just, it, it comes out swinging and works so well. Sergio Salvati's cinematography isn't exactly groundbreaking, but it's never anything less than serviceable and often keeps things, well, pretty. Lots of window lighting uh, that can sometimes add a little too much to the bland feel, but you know, I'll take that over incompetent work any day. He puts in a perfectly okay bit of cinematography here. I, I feel like a lot of this comes down to the budget, uh, producer Charles Band and uh, the director Raphael uh, Zelensky just not really having the time or needing to uh, present anything more complicated for the atmosphere. They really just, it's a castle, make it look like the inside of a castle. And Salvati did that, and there we go. Uh, but he does perfectly good work. It's it's very professional. The second unit creature stuff, again, directed by John Beekler and shot by Roberto Davanzati, is a little more energetic and wild, but it also, it, you know, that the scenes necessitate that, so it's not surprising. The video quality itself is generally very good. Uh, the film stock is obviously kind of cheap and grainy. Uh, a lot of the exteriors, in fact, a lot of the film, but mo generally just the exteriors, uh, tends to favor a bit of a green tint. I'm assuming that's just natural to that film stock. I, I don't know off the top of my head, but 
Um, it does have a bit of a green tint to it. The big issue is that Spellcaster is just not quite sleazy enough and winds up feeling a bit bland. They're still fun to be had with some very well played characters and some great effects work from John Beekler and his team, and it's a nice way to pass an hour and a half, but it's certainly no classic. That said, you know, if you are, if you are an adamant completist, uh, if you're somehow just like a huge Richard Blade fanboy, uh, or if you just like that very 80s feel, you want something that's, you know, maybe not as nasty as a lot of other movies that you have in your collection, you want something that's, you know, I think you could show this to, you know, a, a kid and be fine. I mean, not too young, but, you know, maybe like, you know, if you have like a 12 year old, I don't know. I don't know. You're the parent, you decide. But it's a nice, inoffensive bit of entertainment that I mildly recommend. Which is more than I can say about Vice Academy. <laughs> Shots fired! Uh, so, uh, Spellcaster, as far as extras, uh, we got a 13-minute interview with Richard Blade. Uh, that stuff, that one's, uh, it's a pretty good interview. He, he repeats a lot of stuff quite a bit, and I wouldn't say that he necessarily gives us the most information about the making of the film, but uh, he's very charismatic, very charming, and he does paint a, a good picture of what filming was like. Beyond that, we also get an interview that is 19 minutes long with William Butler and Michael Deke. Uh, these guys are great. They're also extremely charismatic. As far as like personalities on display, we get a, a real nice roster on this release. Uh, and they talk about production and doing the makeup effects, uh, working with uh, John Beekler, working with the director, Rafael Zielinski, uh, and you know, kind of what all the actors were like. They really paint a picture. They give us a ton of information about the production. Uh, they're a little fuzzy on some details, but overall, a uh, great, great interview with those guys. So, um, and that's really about it. As far as the other extras, um, you know, uh, we get, oh wow, the interview isn't even, huh. So it does say on the back that there is an interview with the director, uh, Rafael Zielinski, and that is not accurate. That is not um, one of the extras. In fact, the two interviews that are on the disc are not even mentioned on the back of the case. Now there is a promotional still gallery um, so that's fine, I guess. Uh, but that's the only extra listed here that's actually on the disc, which is a little frustrating when, like, you know, I, I understand that these go out, like the, the time for these going out is very just quick and things change at the last minute, especially this year. This year is very tough for these distributors. So this is by no means me shitting on vinegar syndrome at all. Don't get that impression, but it is frustrating that you have on the back of the actual uh, Blu-ray case. Hey, yeah, we got an interview with uh, the director, Rafael Zielinski. And then that's not on the disc, but there are two interviews that are on the disc that are not actually listed. Um, that is super frustrating. Is that on, I'm assuming that's on both sides. Let's see here. Yep, it's on both sides. So that's a, that's a little annoying. Um, uh, beyond that, oh, and I forgot to mention, it is restored in 2K from the 35 millimeter inner positive, uh, which is, you know, accounts for how good it looks. You know, it looks like a direct uh, scan of the inner positive. I, like, I don't know how to, it, it's about as clean as it's gonna look. So yeah, that is Spellcaster. Uh, some frustrating issues, but overall, pretty good movie. Uh, I, I, I feel like I, probably gave it more negatives overall in this video than positives. But the main thing to remember is, you know, it is a well shot film, not amazing, but well shot. There are some phenomenal creature effects. Uh, as far, all the, all the money very much went to the right places. You know, it has a actual castle as it's setting. There is a plenty of studio stuff as well, but a good chunk of this movie is shot in an actual, uh, Italian castle, which is super cool. And if you've watched any other Charles Band movies, you might recognize it. Uh, and, um, you know, the acting is pretty solid. I didn't really talk too much about the actors, but they're all really good. Like, it is a very well acted film. This is a professional production. And I can't say anything too negative about that. I do wish Adam Ant was in it more, since he is, of course, literally on the cover, no matter how you cut it. And looks nothing like that. I think that's taken from one of his music videos. Uh, he doesn't even wear eyeliner in the movie, so that's that's weird. Um, you know, it is not as dark or violent as I probably would have liked. But, you know, again, if you want some light horror entertainment uh, with a dash of fantasy, this one's pretty good. So, uh, yeah, that's it. I don't, yeah, uh, Spellcaster, 
is Spellcaster. <laughs> uh, what a what a lame review. Uh, so, thank you so much for watching. Uh, I'll be back later in this week with more reviews. Um, we'll be doing a lot of Vinegar Syndrome this month. Texas Chainsaw, of course, is coming up as sort of the Thanksgiving special. And, uh, yeah. Thanks. Go check out my merch and, like, my Patreon and junk. And until next time, uh, go watch a movie. <laughs>